Now we're doing chapter 13, part two. Okay, we left off with John Mark leaving Paul and his companions and going back to Jerusalem and how that kind of put a rift in between them. So now, so he left and Paul and his buddies went from Perga and arrived at Antioch in Pisidia. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. So after the reading of the law, as they do in the writings of the prophets in the synagogue, the synagogue officials sent a word to them, like a little message saying, hey brothers, if you have any words of encouragement for the people, say it please. So Paul stood up and motioning with his hand said, men of Israel and you who fear God, listen up. The God of this people Israel chose our fathers and made the people great and numerous during their stay as foreigners in the land of Egypt. And then with an uplifted arm, he led them out of there. For a period of about 40 years, he put up with their behavior in the wilderness. And I can relate to God having to put up with the behavior in the wilderness for 40 years because he put up with mine. So I figure if he put up with a whole bunch of peoples, I guess he could put up with mine because he loves us all. He loved me. He loved them. And here I am reading his word on YouTube. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave their land to our ancestors as an inheritance. This took about 450 years. After this, he gave them judges until the prophet Samuel. Then they asked for a king. <laughs> so God gave them what they asked for. And gave them Saul, a man from the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. There goes 40 years again. 40 years. Wilderness number. And when he had removed them, he raised up David to be their king of him. He testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which meant his heart conformed to my will and purposes. Who will do all my will? From this man's descendants, God brought to Israel a savior in the person of Jesus, according to his promise. Before his coming, John the Baptist had preached a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course of ministry, he kept saying, What or who do you think that I am? I am not he the Christ, but be aware. One is coming after me whose sandal straps I ain't even worthy to untie, even if I were his slave. Brothers, sons of Abraham's family, and those among you who fear God, to us has been sent the message of this salvation obtained through faith in Jesus Christ for those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers who fail to recognize or understand both Jesus and the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath have fulfilled these very prophecies by condemning him. And though they found no cause or charge deserving death, they asked Pilate to have him executed. And when they had finished carrying out everything that was written in scripture about him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days, 40, 40 again, he appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, the very ones who are now his witnesses to the people. And we are bringing you the good news of the promise made to our fathers, that God has completely fulfilled this promise to our children by raising up Jesus as it is also written on the second Psalm, you are my son today, I have begotten you. And as the fact that he raised him from the dead, never again to return to decay in the grave, he has spoken in this way, I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David, those blessings and mercies that were promised to him. That was from Isaiah 55, 3. For this reason, he also says in another Psalm, you will not allow your holy one to see decay. And that's Psalm 16, 10. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was buried among his fathers and experienced decay in the grave. But he whom God raised to life did not experience decay in the grave. So let it be clearly known by you, brothers, that through him forgiveness of sins is being proclaimed to you. And through him, everyone who believes, who acknowledges Jesus as Lord and Savior and follows him is justified and declared free of guilt from all things and from which you could not be justified and freed of guilt through the law of Moses. Therefore be careful so that the things spoken of in the writings of the prophets does not come upon you. 
Look, you mockers, and marvel and perish and vanish away, for I am doing a work in your days, a work which you will never believe, even if someone describes it to you, telling you about it in every detail. From Habakkuk 1, 5. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people kept begging that these things might be spoken about to them again next, next week, next Sabbath. They're like, come back, we need to hear some more preaching. When the congregation of the synagogue had been dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who, talking to them, were urging them to continue in the grace of God. So on the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered up to hear the word of the Lord about salvation through Christ. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began contradicting the things said by Paul and were slandering him. And at the same time, Paul and Barnabas spoke out. Boldly and confidently, they could care less what anybody had to say about what they were saying because they were still going to talk about Jesus. And they said, It was necessary that God's message of salvation through faith in Christ be spoken to you, Jews, first. Since you repudiated and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life, now we're going to turn to the Gentiles. For that is what the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have placed you as a light for the Gentiles so that you may bring the message of eternal salvation to the end of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying fine and praising and giving thanks for the word of the Lord and all those who have been appointed and designated for eternal life by God believed in Jesus Christ as the Christ, their Savior. And so the word of the Lord of, regarding salvation was being spread through the entire region. But the Jews incited the devout, prominent women and the leading men of the city and instigated persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them forcibly out of their district. But they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were continually filled throughout their hearts and souls with joy and with the Holy Spirit. And that's where I segued into the video called Thinking Out Loud about how simple salvation really is and that religion tend to make, t tends to make it complicated. So if you haven't listened to that, just from here, you can go back to the video Thinking Out Loud.